Well, former Iranian diplomat Merdad Khonsari joins us now live from Marbella. Thank you so much for your time, sir. These enrichment levels are for now very, very low, far below weapons grade. Is the inference there, however, that it will continue to weapons grade if the EU doesn't step up and do something? I don't think that necessarily follows. I think Iran is caught between a rock and a hard place. They are under pressure. They have very limited cards to play. And their hope is that, uh, irrespective of what the past history has been, they consider themselves to have been in accordance with the agreement and that uh, uh, it's the United States that has backed out and pressured Iran and uh, destroyed the Iranian economy. So uh, they are doing this. I think their main incentive is to try to get the Europeans to come through with the kind of promises that they have made, uh, knowing full well that, you know, further enrichment, I mean, they cannot eat enriched uranium, and a bomb doesn't do them any good, except for isolating them even more. So I believe it's just a tactic at best in trying to get things going in a way that they can see some economic relief. What realistically can EU signatories do? I mean, they're also stuck between a rock and a hard place, but between Washington and Tehran. Well, I think that uh, there are, I mean, this instex, this uh, mechanism which the Europeans have devised, if the Europeans come through by putting some uh, money into this organization so that uh, companies dealing with Iran have some form of a guarantee, there are many companies in Europe that do not trade with the United States and don't have to fear uh, secondary sanctions being imposed on them by the United States. So uh, there could be a measure of relief. I mean, that can go uh, some ways in trying to alleviate Iran's worries. And also, it's a sign of goodwill that the Europeans are actually doing something instead of saying that they want to do something. And I think perhaps this is one of the items which was the topic of discussion between President Rouhani and President Macron last night, but I think that uh, there are there are certain steps that Europe can effectively take in concert with Russia and China to allow for Iran to have, let's say, a larger portion of oil sales to be able to uh, service some of the basic requirements that the country has. We have heard from French President Emmanuel Macron, who has suggested he has some concerns around the possibility of uh, a military conflict between the US and Iran if this continues to escalate. Do you think that's a real possibility? Well, you know, military, you have to define what, you know, military conflict is. I mean, the question of, uh, let's say, the US invading Iran, I don't think anybody gives much credence to that. The possibility of uh, intensive airstrikes to be continued or conducted over a lengthy period of time, let's say for a week to a month. I don't think anybody gives much credence to that either. But some sort of a surgical military strike against certain uh, targets of the IRGC, you know, just, you know, a sort of retaliation or a reminder if Iran, let's say, gets involved in some other form of an incident along the lines that we have seen in the past several weeks, that may be a possibility, but that is a very limited response. I don't see the United States wanting to escalate uh, in a military way that goes beyond a reasonable you know, amount, because I don't think the Americans want to involve themselves in yet another Middle Eastern war, and everybody is cautious not to go beyond certain red lines. Here's hoping that is the case. Thank you so much for your time. That's former Iranian diplomat Merdad Khonsari, live from Marbella.